Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Steve Peterson with Infinity Investments, and I'm excited to talk to y'all today about networking. Networking, networking, networking. I believe that's the number one way, particularly in the real estate business, but really any way, any business, uh, to build your database, which really, your database, your contacts, is your gold mines, the lifeblood of your business, particularly any business where you're in the sales or service industry. Your, your, your network is your net worth. And I'm gonna talk about the five things, the five most important aspects to successfully networking. So first of all, if you like this content, you know, click the subscribe button, smash that like button, stay tapped in because we're always talking about content that's relevant to the real estate and entrepreneurial world. So just tap in with us. So the first thing I'm gonna to talk to you about networking is tap into related industry groups. Okay, any industry that you're involved in, particularly real estate, there are a bunch of trade associations, a bunch of networks, real estate investing, they call them real estate investment clubs, um, RIAs, real estate investing associations, uh, real estate brokerage associations, Give you a couple of groups that I'm tapped in. I'm tapped in with the Realtors, which is the National Association of Real Estate Brokers. It's the Black Brokerage Association. I'm also tapped in with the CCIM organization. That stands for Certified Commercial Investment Member. Uh, for both of these organizations, I've served as the local board president, which really got me a lot of access to contacts, connections, uh, high profile folks, even political people in my marketplace. But you know what else it got me is a lot of I was able to hone my networking skills, and more importantly, I was able to hone my leadership skills. But here's the deal. I've closed several deals with people who are within those networks, and I've also developed lifelong friendships and, and business connections that when I have something of value to, to, to offer, I have a group of people that I can depend on and bring that to. So the first thing I'm gonna say about networking is tap into industry groups and there's a whole bunch of them out there so you figure out in your local area and, I, and I, I think something that is local so that you can make sure you make connections especially if you're in real estate make connections with the people who are in your marketplace critical 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 all right the next thing we'll talk about is honing your 30 second pitch okay this is who you are in a nutshell okay biggest thing when you are networking the biggest mistake I see people networking is people go into the pitch about their product or their service. Not the time for that, okay? Once you develop a relationship, you can set up a time to follow up, then you can go into that. When you're first meeting something, someone at a networking event or at any anywhere where you network, you want to have iced down a 30-second pitch about who you are and what you do. So mine goes a little something like this. How you doing? My name is Steve Peterson. And first of all, never start off with the pitch. You want to ask engaging questions to the other person, okay? And then when they ask you, well, what is it that you do? Well, I'm in the commercial real estate business. I help buyers, sellers, and investors achieve their real estate investing goals. That's what I'll say. Then I'll go into, what is it that you and your business do, okay? Because never just stop with your 30-second pitch. Give your 30 second pitch and then follow up with the question. But the key is have something down where you can you know it like the back of your hand and you can quickly say what you do succinctly. Don't take two or three minutes, 30 seconds, and then follow it up with a question. And that leads me into the third most important aspect about networking is asking engaging questions. Most of a conversation, really a good conversation, is questions going back and forth. So once someone's asked you about what you do, you've given them your 30 second pitch, not sold your whole product, but your 30 second pitch, you then wanna follow up with that. And you, try, you wanna to try to avoid what do you do? Um, you want, may wanna talk about what line of business are you in? What is your company doing? What's your mission? You know, what's your angle? What's your niche? You know, how long have you been in that line of, of work? You know, what are some of the challenges and what are some of the exciting things in that, in that industry? And you'll be surprised. 
once you start talking to people and asking them about, about, about their question, about their business, they're going to respond and a lot of times they're going to get rolling. And what you want to do at that time is you want to listen and you want to actively listen, meaning that eye contact, you want to look them in the eye. You don't want to be looking over there. Hey, okay. Oh, well, it makes sense because you're showing them that you don't really care about what they're saying. So when you got them talking, engage them with your eyes and really listen to what they're saying because now you know how you can connect with this person if this is going to be let's say a direct prospect or maybe this is going to be a contact where you guys can share referrals or maybe this is someone that could be a vendor or something provide something of value but you would never know that if you don't listen so number three is ask engaging questions and actively listen okay now the biggest thing another big mistake i see number four is get the other person's contact information. The biggest mistake I see a lot of people at networking events is they just are so quick to give their business card, which is cool, but what you really want to do is get the other person's business card or and or contact info. You know, I'm kind of behind the times of technology, but nowadays when you go at an event, or at least before this pandemic, uh, what was popular is the LinkedIn app where you just kind of scan it in and then now you're connected on LinkedIn. And that's kind of like the new business card. I was in San Francisco at a meeting. Everybody was like, oh, I don't have a business card, but I can scan you on my LinkedIn. So that's great because instantly now you're connected in each other's network. And the biggest thing what I want to see is that I want to get that person's contact info and then follow up. Now, at, once they give me theirs, then I'm going to pull out my business card. Okay, thank you. Here's my business card. But here's a way to contact me. Here's a way to stay in contact. Because here's what I find. Most of the time when you give people your business card, they're probably not going to call you back unless they really need your product or service. Right? We, you know, business is a contact sport. Right? It's like football. I love football. Football coach. Business is a contact sport. And what you want to do is that you want to be able to contact the people you're going after. Not just allowing them or waiting for them to contact you. You want to go after them to contact them uh, for whatever you're doing, okay? And that's a key, is that you get their contact information. So many people make this mistake, and I got a bunch of real estate agents that work for me, and a couple times we went to um, networking events, and I'll say, hey, you got the business card? No, 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 but I get mine. Cool, but what you wanna do is get their info. And then, and then, and then this is another thing. A lot of folks think, I need to have my perfect business cards in order to go out there and network. Okay, I've I've been times where I ordered business cards, I'm out, I don't have any business cards, and some of my, the best connections I've made is at events like that, where I'm, oh, sorry I don't have a business card, but let me get yours, I'll add you on LinkedIn right now. Bottom line is, get their info, okay? Last thing, number five, last but certainly not least, is follow up, follow up. Another big thing a lot of people do, hey, I make this great connection, you know, we, we hit it off, we, you know, this guy's, you know, doing all these things, he's right in line with what I'm doing. Uh, this lady is, you know, my ideal client. Fantastic. Now you need to follow up, book an appointment to meet or Zoom nowadays with them. And you want to at least book something 30 minutes to an hour, at lunch, a coffee, something to that effect, to where now you can engage with them about what you're offering. Okay, and again, when, you, when you're following up, when you're meeting with them, you still have to ask engaging questions. You still have to engage them where they are. But the bottom line is you need to follow up, okay? And, you know, that's been one of the, the biggest things. I, I, I'm pretty good at networking. Recently, I've gotten a lot better at follow-up. When my young, younger days, I just was so pound to pavement, pound to pavement, meet all these great people. But I would only follow up, you know, with the people I work like ready to buy real estate that day. But what I've learned to do is make sure that I follow up with everyone and then having made them as a connection, met them, talked to them, now I can add them into my database. And then when we send out emails, of, and, and, and again, I don't send out spam emails, we send out emails of value, emails about the properties that we have for sale, emails about the events that we're having, emails about videos that we did that is relevant content in the marketplace. Don't spam people. But if you have met them and you're cool, now you can put them in your database. And now when you have an email or something of value that goes out, they're seeing it. 
okay? So this is a key when you're out there networking. And the big mistake I, lot of see, I see a lot of people ma making when they make the connection is not following up. And sometimes when you meet somebody really successful, it can be intimidating. But at the end of the day, they bleed blood just like you, all right? You are just as good, if not better than them. They may be further along than you, all right? But you gotta make sure if, if they are better than you, even more the reason that you need to be meeting with them to get that get learn from them, you know, get some skills from them, make some connects with them. So make sure you follow up. And I hope this 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 really helps y'all. And just to recap, the, the five things are first of all, tap in with groups within your industry. Uh, second of all, have a 30-second pitch down. Do not sell your product or service at the networking. Rather have your 30 second pitch down. Third thing ask engaging questions okay not just what do you do okay maybe what line of business uh, are you involved in what is your company's focus things of that nature then listen actively okay key listen actively number four get the info of the other person don't be so concerned about giving your business card get their business card then follow up with your business card or contact information Last thing is to follow up. Don't do all the heavy lifting and then not do the easy part, which is follow up to make the connection to see if that can actually generate revenue or profits for you. So I hope this has been helpful again. Smash that like button, hit the subscribe, stay tapped into us, keep networking, build your business. The economy needs you guys. Let's keep rocking. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.